your pastry, bakery, and quality food, CK Restaurant is the only place to be. We do catering for bad days, weddings, and all related services. We have all kinds of local foods, American, European, and even beyond. Come and have a taste of our local juice, ebe and other services. At CK Restaurant, customer satisfaction is our priority. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story building, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Seaview Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, children daycare, and a lot more. Our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, sonar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259220 or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.
Actually, um, if you guys have been following, sometime last week, or so a couple of weeks ago, I called for a press conference, right? I called for a press conference at the property in Bijilo. And um, most of the media houses were there. And what, what was happening on that day was the Sharif were coming to give us possession of the property. So I'm sure from that day, you guys must have had history of what happened and led to that day. So we got possession, but uh, that same day, we got obstruction. We couldn't carry on the business of the day. But after a, back, uh, you know, a, a vigorous back and forth, uh, we were let to do what we needed to do. The police that came to uh, stop us eventually uh, did not see the need or saw that we are the rightful owners, so they decided to go. So they went and left us. So every day or day or so, we go back and forth to carry on with our business. So that's what we started. But it's like there has been a lot of flip-flop. One day we will go, they say, okay, they, nobody will say anything to us. The security is still there. But sometimes we will go and then, you know, he will come and say, oh, I just uh, told my authorities that you are here and they say you, you should leave. But every time I go there, they ask me to leave. I insist that I wasn't going to leave because I'm not going to just act on word of mouth by somebody I don't even know who he is. I'm not the one who placed that person there because as far as I'm concerned, the property is rightfully owned by the organization that I represent. So uh, fast forward today, over the weekend, I've been going there up and down with workers, with the weldermen to do measurements, to change the gates, because we are planning to put our own security personnel at the place. So we went in there, there is a gate at the back by the beach that is open. It was measured to fix the gate. There is another gate to the uh, left side of the property as you enter that needed to be fixed. So we've gone there, all measurements have been done, and today, Finally, I got the laborers to go and start block work uh, and uh, uh, all that cement, a truckload of cement as well to be delivered because the workers were supposed to start work today. So when we got there, around um, 8 o'clock, because they left around 7.30, Jim Pex, coming there. So 8-ish, eight, eight after 8, we arrived there. So when we got there and then I entered, then the security came out and said um, that the truck is not going to enter. I was like, why? He said, well, um, I have to call to find to, to seek permission before I allow the truck to enter. So he made calls and I'm sure they told him not to allow the truck to enter. So he went and got a padlock and locked the, the main gate. You understand? So I went through the other side because there is another gate on the side that is like they only put corrugated iron sheets there because the gate is not good. So I removed the corrugated irons and opened the gate and asked the truck to enter and the laborers. So he rushed the other side and came and stood in front of the gate and said that the truck is not going to enter. So we are there back and forth, back and forth. They will enter, they will not enter. That's when I started contacting media houses because I sensed that something is going to happen. I call, uh, call media houses and say, okay, this is the situation, and all of you who have been following from last week, we've been given possession, but then yet again we are having obstruction. So um, the first to get on the scene was uh, Fatu, Fatu Network that arrived. But then as, at the time the Fatu Network arrived, he had also called, and then they sent re reinforcement team. So a truck full load of uh, paramilitary arrived at the scene. So they also went and all blocked the other gate that I opened, um, because my car was also in front of the gate that they put the padlock. I was also making sure that if my car doesn't enter in my property, then nobody else has a right to enter in that property. So I put, parked my car in front of the gate. So now the, 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 the people that brought the cement, they needed to go. So I instructed them to offload the cement and just put it in front of the gate where my car is so that at some point in time the laborers can carry it to get it, take it inside. Then the, the, the paramilitary, they said they will not offload it. They had already offloaded actually half, about I think 47 or 53, but about that, that they've offloaded. So they asked the truck driver to leave or whatever. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, when I, they were telling the truck driver, don't do this, I was telling the truck driver, I am paying you, I brought you here, you need to work under my directive and instruction, so do what I tell you. Then all of a sudden, somebody else came from, from um, uh, how to call it, Senegambia. Apparently, he's their boss. So he came, you know, son, and tried to engage us. Yeah. I said, Say it again. I, I can't remember the name of the guy. Anyway, I, maybe a little I, I'll be able to, I can find out. So, uh, but then the guy that came is the, the, the truck that came, the team lead is Ham Ahmad Ba. 
Hamad Bah is their team lead. So when this guy came and was trying to call us to the corner to talk to us, I said, no, I want everything to be on record. I am on Facebook Live and a media reporter is here. I want everything that we do, whatever. He said, no, he doesn't want to be filmed or whatever. That, that reporter should not even shoot him. I said, the reporter has no business with you. He is outside. You guys have denied him access because I asked Ibrahima to come in. When Ibrahima was coming in with the camera, they just yanked him and pushed him out and then, you know, hit the camera, the camera fell. You understand? That's when we all intervene and say, you don't have a right to assault a journalist. He is a journalist. He is independent. He's doing a job. Allow him to do his job. You talk to us and leave the journalist alone. So they said, so he asked three men to go and stop the journalist, like stand in front of the journalist so that he doesn't have access to come to the property. So he moved and went like opposite the, the, the property. There is a fence there. So he stood there and recording everything that was happening. So I guess at that point in time, I was also on Facebook Live talking about what was happening. They got irritated, uh, irritated and frustrated. They said they were going to arrest us. I said, okay, fine, arrest us. You know, I don't have a problem. Arrest us and take us anywhere. But we are not backing down. And once we go, we get released. We are coming right back. We are not relenting because we know that we have solid documentation, documents from the court to say this is your property. The sheriff came, uh, sent the bailiff to come to the property and handed the property back to us. Who else supersedes that decision? Who else can set that aside apart from a competent court? So that's where I'm standing and I will stick by it. I am not relenting. Still so when that the, happened, the they, ya they yanked, uh, 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 actually, they approached me and said they waited because somebody was, the boss was saying, arrest them, arrest them, arrest them. You know, I just stood at one place into the, inside the property. These guys were there. Lamin and Gilbert. So they came and yanked him or whatever, and all of the three of them and threw him on the pickup truck. They went and got uh, uh, Gilbert also, put him on the pickup truck. And then all of a sudden, the boss told him, You know what? The, 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 uh, the reporter was recording. I'm sure he has something. Take him so that he can delete everything he has there. So they went like far from, the, from where we were and got him also, Ibrahima, yanked him with his camera, with his tripod and everything in, and threw him on the truck. And then that's when they, they came for me. I said, nobody should touch me. Don't touch me. I don't want any man to touch me. There was a, you are going. I said, I am not going. So the boss later on said, you know what? I said, of course, I cannot abandon my staff. When, if you take them, I will come. But I am not going to allow you guys to manhandle me or to, to drag me like you're doing everybody else. I will not allow it. So when they left, that's when I took the car and then went and met them at uh, Senegambia police station. When we got there, nobody knows why we were there. Nobody was able to answer questions. Everybody asked, they say, well, they just brought you, I don't know. Then all of a sudden, this same guy that came to the property, came back and said, was on the phone calling and talking and calling and talking and told, instructed that they should bring us to, to Kairaba. So that's when I said, okay, I have already communicated to our lawyer that we are at Senegambia. If you're taking us anywhere else, Allow me time so that I consult with a lawyer and inform her, Julie, that we are being uh, taken. So they allowed me time. I called and told her that, well, they said they're taking us to Karaba. So she said, okay, just go there. I'm in Banjul, but I'll come and meet you there. So that's how we've been brought here. We came again. No, nobody here knows why we were brought. So they, need, they kept get on consulting, consulting, consulting. All of a sudden, they wrote charges on a piece of, on, on a piece of paper. So eventually, first they said they were going to put us in the cell. And then we said no. And with the support of everybody that was here, mm -hmm. everybody stood and said, no, it's not right. They're not criminals. You just brought them here. You've not charged them. You want to put them in the cell. For what reason? Mm -hmm. So there was a push and pull between the people here, us, and the, and, and the police. Eventually, the SO said, OK, that's fine. We can go sit in his office and wait. So we were there waiting. They were consulting back and forth, telephone calls. Eventually, they said they, he got instruction that we should be charged. First of all, they said that they were told that I took my car and ran into the fence and, and, vandalized. and vandalized the fence, which was absolutely not true. That was false. That was a blatant lie, you know, from them. But afterwards, he got a call again and said I should be charged for obstruction and uh, malicious uh, damage of property. Okay, and that was written. That was that charge was written on the charge seat. Our lawyer was here, and the lawyer said we are not. We are not signing it we're not doing that why you know which property it is their property so even if they vandalize it they damage it supposedly what you're saying is true what law have they broken so they're not signing it so after after several consultations they changed that to 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 assault okay they changed the charge sheet to assault and 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 
and then no. del deleted um, uh, an obstruction. obstruction so they changed that charge so when they did that again they say assault so our lawyer is like assault who who have they assaulted they said no when we go to court you know they will mean the lawyer is said no we cannot just sign a blank paper that just say assault when you assault you assault a human being so the person's name should be on the charge sheet and there should be a complaint from that person that you claim that they have assaulted so we went back and forth back and forth our lawyer insisted that we were not going to say anything or sign anything then they changed that one again from assault, they came with uh, uh, criminal, trespass. criminal trespass. Yeah, criminal trespass and malicious damage of, of, of property. Malicious injury of property. Injury of property, there you go. So that was the final charge that we are being charged for and we had to get sorties to, call, to bail us and we are supposed to be reporting here tomorrow at 12.30. Oh, that's the bail bond? Say it again? Uh, $100,000 $100, is each. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I honestly don't know. The anti-crime has lived there, you know, we're stationed there for more than two years or so. Mm. Whatever they have done there, I have no idea. I don't know. But the bottom line is it is our property. Whatever they've put there, I think time has, you know, if time has overtaken them that they cannot do anything about it. According to media reports, uh, as you stated, uh, contrary to what you stated, um, uh, according to what Party Network reported, they said Ibrahim Ajame, the police said he was uh, um, mistakenly arrested. They didn't knew he was a reporter. You are saying that they, they knew he is no, a reporter. That's a lie. It is on record. When Isma I I Ibrahim came and was, I called Ibrahim to come. Ibrahim was coming, they said Ibrahim should not enter. Ibrahim said, I am a journalist and it is on record. Go to my Facebook. I was on uh, live. And Ibrahima was also recording at the time. She was also rec he, he was also recording uh, during that time. He showed them, this is my press card. I'm a journalist from Fatu Network. No, no. You understand? And the officer was like, I don't care. My bosses say you, nobody should enter here. And Ismail said, I am independent. I'm here to do a job. It is all on record. So again, it just tells just you what lie. kind of a system we have. Okay. They, they, they're very, very corny. They're very manipulative. They lie to their noses. And they think we are, we are dummies. No, we are not. The reason why I started doing the Facebook Live, as soon as I got there and sensed that there were, there were going to be issues, I went on Facebook because I know that they will lie. They will change things. When we came here, the first thing they said was they, brought, they arrested us because I ran my car into the property. I'm but when they realized they don't have any proof to substantiate that they, it changed again now they said assault who did you assault it was a truck load of paramilitary that came there and nobody wants to step for step forward and say I was the one that was assaulted so when they couldn't get anybody to use as a pawn they decided to put that aside and come up with something else so the trend you know the trend of them changing and changing within these hours just tells you that, 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 that they are not they're not they're not they're not on the right track a purported press release exactly but again that is a lie because right now I can tell you there is no uh, 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 um, proceedings before the courts the court has been determined, okay? I have shared the documentation. It's online, it's everywhere, and I can provide it to anybody. This file that I have in my hands here shows everything from day one. Correspondences, judgments, filings, everything is in this file, and they all have it. So for them to say there's a proceeding in court, that is a lie. Okay, if there's a proceeding, Let them provide state it. the case number, state it. Let them provide. State the case number. The only uh, 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 um, proceeding that was in, in, in court was we were the ones that filed something for the court to enforce the judgment that was already existing. But now if, the, if we file something and say court, we have a judgment, but then the sheriff is not executing, the police have refused to move, please help us execute it. And now the anti-crime has moved. So those, that, that judgment has, that filing has been overtaken by events. There is no need for that to even proceed because what we were asking for was, please take the, send the anti-crime away, please take them out. But that was from us, not them. They came to court and conceded and say, we don't have a case. We don't have a case. Even the 500,000 we were asking for cost damages, they even considered and they said they were going to pay it. The judge pay. asked them, are you sure even the cost you want to pay it, they said, well, according to instruction, we should concede we don't have a case. And the judgment from, from, from the attorney general, from the attorney general, because the, 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 um, um, the, it's the attorney general that represents the state, that was representing the, the, the interior minister, that was representing the IGP, that was representing the lands ministry. So it's from, and Attorney General was also a party to that suit. Mm -hmm. They came to court and conceded. The judge at the high court, Achibongo, entered a judgment. So who else ha can, can, can set that aside? It's only a court. No other person in this country can set that aside. How frustrating was it for you that the police will be taking instructions
construction on foot before the Well, it is super frustrating, my brother, because in this 21st century, 2021, after 22 years of authoritarian rule, we are still back at this. It is frustrating. It is really, really frustrating. It just tells us that we, only, we still have the same system operating in this country. Nothing has changed. It's only an individual that has changed. The same machinery is operating, and we all need to join hands and put a stop to it. Because today is my organization. Tomorrow it could be you, your organization, your media house. And again, the injustice that was meted on Ibrahima is unjust, it's uncalled for. It's because he's a journalist. journalist. It's, it's an attack journalist. on journalists. Now you are trying to suppress the media from exposing the, from exposing the dubious and callous acts of, 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 of the force. That's what they were trying to do. And he was really intimidated, yanked, pushed. His camera was hit. Why should they do that? When he openly said on camera, I'm a journalist, I'm a journalist, I'm a reporter, I'm an independent person. I have a, a right by the, given to me by the by National, National Assembly. Assembly. He, he repeatedly said that. I am given this by, the right by the National Assembly to cover anything that is of interest to the media. Really? And they had it. It's on record. So okay. for them to come up with that bogus, bogus press release, and the press release did, did not say anything. Yeah, it, it, State it, it, the facts. You have a back and forth uh, close door meeting with the police officers. Can you unfold what has been said? Well, they're also in dilemma. They don't know what is going on. Because they're level-headed. They saw the documentation. They saw the file. They saw everything else and acknowledge, well, you're on the right track. But our hands are tight. We are getting directives. I mean, since when we finish, uh, they've charged us finally with those bogus charges, mm -hmm. now it's a bailable offense. To bail us, I mean, this is a simple issue that okay. even, even, even a sub uh, uh, smallest, smallest, smallest okay, police officer here can, can grant us bail. But because but they're it, getting it directives hours, from the top, hours, everybody is saying, I'm waiting for call, I'm waiting for call to see whether we should grant you bail or oh, not. Man. They had already called me in when they called me and say, well, sorry, you guys have to sleep here till tomorrow. I said, no problem. I don't have a problem. All I know is I am not relenting. Because once I leave here, let it be in the next 10 days, I'm going right back to our property to continue what I started. So back and forth, I called the lawyer. The lawyer also called, so they were calling, calling, calling. Eventually, they said, okay, they've got word that they can grant us bail. And then we come back and report here 12.30 tomorrow. So like, if, seriously? If the anti-crime unit of the police force uh, left the property down there, who are they taking uh, directive from? Or who, who has a back interest well, in the place? Well, they, they are not saying. One thing, if you go to my Facebook Live, the officer on the ground today, uh, Sergeant Bojang, was on phone, made it on speaker. Because I was insisting that uh, um, we, were go we, we were not going to go anywhere. So what he did was he called, made a call, and he called Bojang because he was really frustrated as well and said he feels that they're really throwing him under the bus. They give him directives that he himself believes is not right. So he called and told Bojang, you guys need to come because this lady is insisting that she is not moving an inch and she's insisting that his stuff, the laborers are going to go in, the cement is going to go in. All right? And then landing was on the phone because... He made it on speaker for me to hear that it is not him that is stopping us. It is his superiors, the boss, that is giving him directives to act the way he was acting. So the phone was on speaker, and then you can hear landing was saying, But then he said, you know, she's telling us that the IGP is not a party to this. And landing was like, IGP IGP President Landing, Commissioner Landing Bojang. This was Commissioner Landing Bojang. Tell him to... I, no, 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 no. AIG is the assistant inspector. I, I don't know. It's Commissioner. I think it's Commissioner Operations. But the name is Landing Bojang. Landing Bojang. Commissioner Landing Bojang. Well known Landing okay. Bojang. Everybody knows about him. Commissioner Landing Bojang. So, um, you could see that uh, uh, Landing was categorically telling the guy, do as I tell you. Because I've also gotten directives from my boss who told me this morning that uh, he had consulted with the president. He went and he said, Baro, you understand? Nga president no call le. Nte nim baro diya motale. Ati nim baro diya motale. So, uh, according to Landing, uh, the IGP Abdullah Sanyang spoke to Baro and Baro said, under no authority they should allow us access. This, this is not from me. This was on speaker. Landing telling Sergeant Bojang what authority or instructions or directive he also received. Does such a move have anything to do with your political affiliation? Yes. Say it again. Yes. I said, does such a move have anything to do with Absolutely not. Party? Absolutely not. I'm a Gambian. I have right to affiliation. I join, I'm a member of a political party, but this is my job, my daily bread. And I was working 
with this organization prior to me joining a political party. So it absolutely has no connection, no affiliation whatsoever with whatever is happening. It's just like you, ha you are a journalist, you are working for a media house, but you have a political leaning. And I'm sure election day you're going to go, go, go vote for a political party. But that has nothing to do with your work. Do you agree that this Well, whatever their reasons are, for me, I don't even think it's politically motivated. I think it's a corrupt act. They're just being corrupt and dubious. That's, that's what all this is. And really flaunting law, a, a court order, which they are supposed to be protecting the law, but they are the ones seem to be flaunting it. Thank you so much. How prepared are you? Prepared on what? Say it again. How prepared are you to stand against this issue? Well, I'm not relenting. For me, nothing has changed. I've been arrested and charged with bogus charges. We're going to go to court, and they, it, it is up to them to prove beyond reasonable doubt that whatever they've charged me, they have proof and evidences to prosecute me for that. And I'm ready for it. Bring it on. I'll take it. All right? But that has not changed anything. As far as I'm concerned, the property still remains ours, and as the representative of the, of the, the organization, I will continuously, relentlessly execute my duties without fear or favor or intimidation from anybody whatsoever. Skincare Plus 2020 is our year of 
perfection. Zero tasks. Who make any real me fake? Can we refer to tasks? Can we refer to problem? Can we refer to a problem? You picture. Book a man who fake and erect new law. The plastic fee. Love, 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 love like fire. Bring my yoke and your bug of my fire. Yo, nggak transfer lah, sudah. Ya transfer lah. Ha, code ni je. Okay, bersama. Nanti lah edit sotol. Ha, sah sotol. Sorry, agak. Bila ambro? Alba. Alba. Barat Allah sah di sotol ya. Ha, barat. Mau ke jangan nunggu nunggu barat kerja. Ha, jangan nunggu mana forest de biru. Gambia tongkon na lombaria biru. Ha, biru kau na fokato. Barat si kodo kino kato ni fobolong labe. 56 branches mula sura Gambia jang. Ha? Ka. Gambia kono ane Gambia bantala bangkol. Muka kono kia beret. Kono siapa siapa fok falindiru fanya di lafta memenah kodi topoto nung kodi marau. Jangan number one di nyontang. Anum fana nata anoda enterprise sura ni. Golam golam nyinti ko. Domorol fana kol fana be fira ni le daddy man. Nung domorol ni fana beteat. Ha. Gambia dah dah ya lama kumpa kendol sura ni. Ha. Eh, wamu ya. Ha. Apa yang dah? Yang bukan ni dah lafta nyelang kendol lebi naik. Yang lebi bukan ni dah kuol lah. Abar kah? Ha. Yang anda cuci ano lah. Abar kah? We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve.